when you ask a man what does it mean to love a woman he often thinks what can i give so that she can give me back yeah. one of the ways to just connect with your wife or to connect with your woman emotionally is through conversation mm -hmm. intentional conversation yeah. intentional personalized conversation mm -hmm. that will start to build it will it will be st stage one mm -hmm. okay you'll keep discovering that there are more levels okay mm -hmm. It, it, it will start to do that, right? And now for the man, um, men want their women to be able to respect them. The best relationship is one where both partners are committed to give to one another. Hi everyone, how are you doing? This is Decoding the Process and of course I'm your host, Martha Mora, and I'm so glad to be with you here today. Most glad and ma I don't know what to say, but I'm so happy to actually be hosting Mr. Ernest Tomboye and I know you guys Probably know him, and for those who don't, you are going to know him very shortly. Karibu sana. Thank you, Martha. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring our invite, and of course for being here today. Mm -hmm. We want to know who you are. All right. Uh, my name is Anes Fomboe. I am a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, and uh, I am a husband. I've been married for the past ten years to my wife Waturi, and we've got two children. Their names are Tandi and Ivana, ages five and three. I run a ministry called the Relationship Center, which helps espouse biblical family values among contemporary urban youth. And at the Relationship Center, we do a number of things. So we've got a men's pornography addiction recovery program called Powerhouse. We run a premarital class, and we also have a blog, an award-winning blog called Pet Strokes, an online podcast, and we do a lot of counseling to help young men and young women make the right decisions towards marriage. And also we have a uh, a singles ministry called Boy Miss Girl BMG wow. that we hold every quarter here in Nairobi, Kenya. Mm. Mm. Wow, such mm. an introduction. <laughs> I mean, so much to really know about him. And he is here as an expert. You can already tell and he has given an introduction about him being able to do so much about dating and singles and having platforms for mm. relationships. And today we are going to be talking about what it really means to love. Because mm. so much of... um. So, so many of us actually have not been able to learn what it means to love. We are living by default of what we have seen, mm. how we have been raised. And mm. most importantly, you know, because um, our, we, we are easily affected by our surroundings. Just mm. what we see becomes our default setting. But we really want to understand from just especially God's, you know, idea. Because mm. he is the author of all these things. Mm. Like what it really means to love. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I, I don't know when the first time you fell in love, Martha. <laughs> I don't know if you remember. <laughs> I don't know if it's the person you married or uh, someone else. <laughs> well, falling in love, the yeah. first time is the person I married. Yes. The rest, I think, were just um, crushes, or crushes or something. All right, that's, yeah. that's, that's great. But uh, falling in love is an amazing process. And I like that you talked about going back to God's idea. Mm -hmm. Because the first relationship that we have that's given to us is that between Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And from that relationship, you can learn a lot concerning what it means to love. Mm -hmm. Now, the relationship between Adam and Eve did not last too long because sin came into the world. Yeah. And so the only other relationship that God gives us in the scriptures for us to really learn concerning love is between Christ and the church. Yeah. And if you study those two relationships, you can learn what it means to love. I like what the Bible says in Genesis 2.18. It says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. One of the things that Adam is given is a helper, I not just me helper, a helper that is suitable for him. And when it, when and prior to that the Lord says it is not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. The kind of person who is coming to El, into Adam's into Adam's life mm -hmm. is a companion. Because God doesn't want Adam to be alone. And Adam and Eve will love one another. Dr. Timothy Kelly in his book, The Meaning of Marriage, says when you look at that term companion, it implies three types of friendship. And in these three types of friendship is when is where men and women truly love one another. Okay, So he says uh, when a man and woman come together, they come as companions and they need to have three levels of friendship. Number one, they need to have a romantic friendship. Number two, a natural friendship. And number three, a supernatural friendship. And he said, when a man and a woman connect on those three levels, mm -hmm. then they truly love one another. Then they truly complete one another. But if they defraud one another on either of those three levels of friendship, then what happens is that they tend to not give themselves to one another fully. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, all that is in a world where Adam and Eve are perfect. There is no sin in that world. Yeah. Okay, when sin comes into the world, despite having those three levels of friendship, and we look at them into detail, um, it it makes things harder, because 
prior to that god gives adam and eve the opportunity to love one another and they love one another sacrificially they 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 give themselves to one another when sin comes into the world men and women don't give themselves to one another mm -hmm. they seek to take from one another yeah. so yeah. even today in the dating scene mm -hmm. when you ask a man what does it mean to love a woman he often thinks what can i give so that she can give me back yeah. Eventually, there's a trade, you know, I'll take something from her, but I need to give something. There's almost like a contract, you know, and even women think, what shall he give me for me to give him back love? Or what shall I uh, give him for him to give me a certain kind of love? Men often think that the only way to love a woman is to give them money, yes. to give them material possessions. Mm -hmm. Then I've loved her. You know, uh, women often think that the only way to love a man is to give their body, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. And so you find that there's a reductionistic thinking concerning how to love one another. Mm -hmm. Men think, be financially successful and you'll have the capacity to love a woman. Mm -hmm. If you're not financially successful, you have no capacity to love a woman. Mm -hmm. Women think, get your beauty on the up and up, you know. Yeah. Get yourself sexy. And mm -hmm. if you get yourself sexy, then you'll be able to love a man. Yeah. And so what this happen what happens is that Men often look down on themselves when they are incapable of providing. Mm -hmm. And women look down on themselves when they don't fit into the stereotypical ideals of what a beautiful woman ought to look like. And what that does is that it just perpetuates that cycle. So I give you sex, you give me money. I give you money, you give me sex. I <coughs> pour out my finances and you give me something in return. Mm -hmm. It's very reductionistic. But love is more than that. Okay, love is more than that. And uh, if you permit me, I'll maybe look at those three things and we can now, uh, those three levels of friendship and we can <coughs> see what, what the more is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. I also wanted to really delve into the three mm -hmm. levels of friendship because mm -hmm. I, I felt like they were very unique. Yes. I've actually never heard about supernatural friendship. Mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe the natural a bit. Yeah. The romantic, the romantic one. definitely. But yeah, I really want to hear more about that. All right. So let's look at the three. Let's start with the supernatural. Mm -hmm. So um, the Bible tells us in First Thessalonians five twenty three that we are tripartite human beings. What does that mean? We are three in one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you are not who you are seated on this chair that's not all that there is martha mm -hmm. there's more to you you have a body which is seated right here on the chair but you also have a soul yeah. your soul is your mind your capacity to think your will your capacity to choose and then there's your emotions your capacity to feel okay you feel emotion you feel fear worry doubt you feel love and then there's a third part of you that's your spirit mm -hmm. and your spirit is your innermost man and we get that idea from first thessalonians 5 23 paul the apostle clearly says you are made of a spirit a soul and a body Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, for you to understand that helps you. For for you to understand that helps you understand that connecting with someone else of the opposite sex in order to be in a relationship with them needs connection more than the body and the soul. It also needs the spirit, and the spiritual connection is the most ignored connection. Okay, mm -hmm. but the Bible talks a lot about it, and from the spiritual connection, that's where you develop a supernatural friendship with someone. Mm -hmm. Basically, a supernatural friend is someone who helps you get closer to God. Is someone who helps you. Y helps you and God um, develop a better relationship, mm -hmm. okay? And for us in the faith, we know that the way we develop a relationship with God is through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Christ has come on earth, and what has he done? He has shed his blood so that our sins may be forgiven, mm -hmm. and he has given us access to his father, okay? Now, we develop that relationship every day. Mm -hmm. There are days you go through a tough time. Mm -hmm. There are days you and God are not seeing each other eye to eye. A supernatural friend helps you become spiritually mature, mm -hmm. okay? They keep you accountable. They check up on you. They help you develop closer to God. Because this is the reality. That if you are closer to God, you become a better person. You become a better girlfriend or a better yes. boyfriend to your partner. Mm -hmm. If your boyfriend is closer to God, they become a better partner to you. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why? Because once you connect with God, there are certain characteristics of godliness that emanate from you. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you walk with God, you become patient, kind, ge loving, generous. There are these characteristics that come out of you. Mm -hmm. And so it is to your detriment if you have a friend who does not spur you towards God. Mm -hmm. It is to your detriment if you have a friend who cannot encourage you to be spiritually vibrant in your connection to God. It is to your detriment if you are close to God and you've yoked yourself with someone who does not even want the things of God. Yeah. For whom perhaps God is just a fanciful idea. Oh, that's just a myth, by the way. Mm -hmm. Forget about God. For them, God means nothing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But for you, you know he's your creator. He made you, mm -hmm. you know. And Adam and Eve understood that powerfully. In fact, Adam had a personal relationship with God before Eve came into the picture. Mm -hmm. If you look at the second account of creation, Adam is in the Garden of Eden already. Eve comes much later. Mm -hmm. Who was Adam talking with? God. Mm -hmm. 
you know and then when adam is asleep the bible says the lord brought the woman to him Eve did not just appear and randomly ask herself, hey, how did I land here? She knew I was brought here. By who? Yes, right. By God. So each of them had individual relationships with God. Mm. It is vital if you really want to love one another that you're both connected to the source. Mm. You're both connected to God, you know, and that you have a relationship with him. And so that's a supernatural friend. Mm. You keep each other accountable. When you find yourself struggling, okay, you can confess to your supernatural friend. You can tell them, hey, I'm really battling this. And they can help you get back to God. They can pray with you. You can confess a struggle you have to them, you know. And they can actually spur you to walk with God closer, okay. So that's a supernatural friend. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have a natural friend. A natural friend is the one whom you connect at the soul level, you know. Mm -hmm. The one whom, um, the, 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 the one someone whom you can hang out with and just have a great time someone who re-energizes re your soul you know just think about this if you had the next week off who would you hang out with and what would you do mm -hmm. and most likely if this is someone you're in love with mm -hmm. uh, you look forward to hanging out with them you look forward to uh, going for a road trip going for dinner going for lunch going for activities that would just bond you guys together yeah. you know mm -hmm. and the natural friend friendship is normally very underrated especially in christian circles you know mm -hmm. we often don't take time to develop close knit friendships through natural activities mm -hmm. you know activities or activities that just spur you to become uh, to, to become bond to, to bond to this person mm -hmm. you know and then finally the romantic friendship the romantic friendship is a friendship where you meet each other's emotional needs mm -hmm. okay and so i like dr gary chapman's book the five love languages he says there are five ways to love someone you know mm -hmm. he says okay there's we, we say you can love someone but he says we can break it down into five ways and he says he these five ways are words of affirmation acts of service quality time giving gifts physical touch mm -hmm. he says when you meet someone that you love you must understand that no one person is the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The way to love Martha is not necessarily to give her flowers. Yes. Maybe flowers are not her thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's another specific way. Mm -hmm. So he says there are some people who feel loved through words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Okay. You speak words to them. You tell them, "Oh, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're great. You you're lovely. You did this great mm -hmm. thing." When they hear those words, they feel loved. Yeah. You know, and that meets a romantic need. Okay, there's a people who feel love through acts of service. You do small things for them. You get them their cup of coffee. You know, you run an errand for them. You know, they've got a lot of work to do. You help them do that work. You know, their house is dirty. You help them clean up. You help them sort their stuff. Mm -hmm. That those acts of those those acts of service really really do something to them. Okay, mm -hmm. and then the people who feel loved through quality time, spending exclusive time with them. If you want to really get to their heart, spend time with them. Sp cut out time. Look for them. Sit down talk engage in conversation then they feel loved all right when you're in a big setup and you're hanging out many of you they don't really feel loved but when it's just the two of you and you're connecting through conversation then they really feel loved yeah. and then the people who feel loved through giving gifts you know mm -hmm. you get them things buy them flowers get them a watch you know on his birthday buy him something you know mm -hmm. uh, send him airtime send him you know send him pesa do something you know mm -hmm. uh you know when you go to the supermarket grab something get them a bar of chocolate you know something small you know it's some, it didn't have to be something huge you know mm -hmm. but it's just that is a tangible there's a tangible gift that they can actually see and say, hey, uh, my partner gave me this. You know, get them a nice cup with their picture on them, you know, a picture of the two of you. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. And then the people who feel up through physical touch. So for them, they feel up when you hug them, you hold their hand, you hold their hand in public, you know. Uh, when they do something great, you know, you tap their back, you yeah. put your hand on them. They really feel up. Mm -hmm. You must investigate and find out yeah. how your partner needs to be loved. To be all right. Yeah. And when doing that, you meet the emotional, mm -hmm. the emotional. You, you 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 become you you meet the emotional needs and you become romantic friends wow. yeah wow this is just amazing so mm. much information within a very few minutes mm. and and uh we want to discuss more about what it really means to love of course we have been able to understand the three levels of friendship mm. which i've really really loved mm. and of course i really want to before we really go for the break the two natural and um supernatural mm. we have defined them mm. but in a short while can you really tell us how do we build those aspects of friendship because you know for romantic mm. you have already mentioned mm. the languages of love yes and how we can easily get to understand mm. the needs and meet them mm. uh, we really want to understand how do we build the, the natural, natural friendship and the supernatural, and the supernatural well, okay very good so for the natural one of the best things you can do is find out what excites your partner what are the things that they do for fun to relax to get their soul refreshed okay for some people it's perhaps just going for a hike mm -hmm. go for that hike with them mm -hmm. all right you'll build your natural friendship mm -hmm. i'll give you for example maybe from my relationship with my wife mm -hmm. when my wife and i were dating in campus my wife loved theater mm -hmm. 
mm. you know and um I, I had never done theater not even in high school you know but because she loved it i said let me try it out you know so i once went to the theater club you know mm. and i said i just sit and watch her act you mm. know and then they lacked a role and the director said hey you come try out this role you know and i was like me <laughs> so i went i got the script and i read it and the director said fantastic you've been given the role and i thought what i have never acted <laughs> in my life he told me now don't worry you are a natural you'll do it so we, we we began acting the drama team together we had so much fun wow. okay and so by just going to the theater club together we really really bonded mm -hmm. so you must not necessarily like your partner's activities but if you indulge and try who knows you can connect with them mm -hmm. all right now for me on the other hand um i i, I love art there's an artwork that i do called origami you mm -hmm. know so she, my my wife does not really necessarily like it but when i make it she admires it she loves it mm -hmm. you know she 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 looks at those art pieces what are those natural activities that excite your spouse it could be a hike it could be going for a drive mm -hmm. it could be going for a picnic you know but the things that you can just do together that create memories mm -hmm. You know that create memories. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, take a tour with some friends. You know, go you know go climb Mount Kenya. Put some money together. Do something. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't have to have expensive activities, but money gives you options. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then supernatural activity, yeah. supernatural friendship. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to develop a supernatural friendship is one through praying together, mm -hmm. taking time and just praying together as a couple mm. that really bonds your supernatural friendship secondly reading the word of god together spending time to just read and study the word of god mm. together that really bonds you and then thirdly really opening up your heart concerning your struggles and your need for god and mm. fellowshipping together you know mm. just being very open to someone and telling them your areas of need and having them hear you out and fellowship with you that can really bond you two together mm. and those supernatural friendships and the natural friendship will they'll grow yeah they'll be bonded Wow. So are you building your friendship or are you just romanticizing? I mean, that is what many people indulge in. It's true. Many people only focus on the romantic. romantic they forget parts. about the rest. Yeah. yeah, but I love what one coach has. I've ever heard one coach say that um, it's better to really look for a spouse from your friends than getting your spouse and try to make them your friend. I agree. Sometimes 100%. It's, it's, it's much better if you get to grow in mm. friendship and now develop the romantic mm. part. Because I feel like if you start with the romantic part, yeah. it's harder to really develop yeah. the natural Marry friendship. your friend. Yes, marry your friend. So, yeah. wow, that's uh, how we can uh, get this far. And I believe you will join us right after the break. We are coming back. Here we see a woman whose husband is dead, who's, she really does not have an idea what, what next for my life. But does she stop? No, she doesn't. Her tenacity, her resilience played good and she was seen, she was located. Don't put a pause into your life even when life knocks you hard keep on working keep on moving because god is figuring it out welcome back guys of course we have been having an amazing discussion on what it really means to love so we have discussed a lot a lot in the first segment which i believe you have been through it and as we get to this point we want to really be able to demystify something that he mentioned before and which is very i think people have never been able to really understand where where it it ends or where it begins because mm -hmm. we we end up getting confused and then relying on one side of it which mm. is expecting to be loved more than you mm. expect to be giving out the love yeah. so we really want to understand how do we balance the, mm. the fact that we are made to give mm. which of course is the ultimate goal of love as mm. god um even you know demonstrated it mm. but again there's the need Yes. to also be loved. Yes. And that's why I'm really getting this person yes. because yeah. I would have stayed alone. <laughs> yeah. All was about giving. Yeah. So I'm getting to get this person because mm. I still know there are things I mm. want to to really yeah. get to enjoy, yeah. to really get a hold of mm. when I'm with this person. All right. Yeah. So um, the best relationship is one where both partners are committed to give to one another. Mm -hmm. Okay? What are they giving? So the most basic human need for any human being, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, where you live, every human being has this need, okay? The need for acceptance, the need for affirmation, and the need for appreciation, mm -hmm. okay? Every human being has those needs. Whatever relationship you are, the relationship between you and your dad, mm -hmm. you and your child, you and your friend, your, those three needs must be met for any relationship to function well. Mm -hmm. The need for acceptance, mm -hmm. the need for affirmation, and the need for appreciation. Mm -hmm. Now, in a romantic relationship, those needs are heightened. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Okay? You want to know that you are accepted by your partner. Mm. You want to know that your partner has accepted you and has not accepted you and 10,000 other people. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that you are not one amongst many other yeah. girlfriends, one amongst many other boyfriends. That is just you. Mm. Okay? You've been accepted. The opposite of being accepted is being rejected. Mm. And rejection is one of the worst pains you can actually experience in a relationship. Yeah. Okay? The second need is the need for affirmation. Everybody needs to know from their partner that they have value. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so they want to be affirmed. You want to hear you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're handsome. You're great. You're an awesome guy. You know, you know, there's no boyfriend like you in the entire world. There's yeah. no girl like you in the entire world. That's affirming. And we want to be affirmed so that we know that our worth is recognized. Mm -hmm. That's a need. Every relationship has that need. And then finally, the need for appreciation. Mm -hmm. We want to know that our efforts are recognized. You know, when you do something, when, when, when you speak, spend the whole weekend preparing a wonderful meal for your husband mm. and he comes home he finds the home is clean the mm. meal is prepared you've you've you, you know you've really made it nicely for him you you've done all these things for him and he just comes and goes like hey and then he goes to sleep <laughs> you'll be like what yeah. i did all this for you you know you want him to appreciate to say thank you yes. okay the worst kind of pain one of the apart from rejection the opposite of uh, uh, let's go to the first one uh, the, the opposite of being accepted is being rejected yes. uh, being rejected mm -hmm. the opposite of being affirmed is being insulted mm -hmm. okay when you're insulted by someone you love that's very painful then thirdly uh the opposite of being uh, of being appreciated is being taken for granted mm -hmm. so the worst pains in our life come from the opposite of being accepted affirmed and appreciated that is being rejected being insulted being taken for granted yes. when you come into a relationship the best relationship is when a man and a woman are giving those things to one another mm -hmm. and they are giving these things to one another unconditionally what do i mean by unconditionally they are not saying if martha gives then i will give mm -hmm. no they're actually saying you know it doesn't matter whether martha gives or not me i'm giving mm -hmm. okay when they are both doing that when it's mutual that's a fantastic relationship it's what we call a covenant relationship mm -hmm. okay now um uh, a relationship that's not a covenant relationship is what I would call a consumer relationship, mm -hmm. okay? And there are two types of consumer relationships. One, where both partners are just trying to take from one another. Mm -hmm. I come to the relationship and I'm like, accept me, affirm me, appreciate me, me, do this for me, mm -hmm. you know? And the other person is like, no, no, do this for me. And so we come and we demand from one another. Yeah. And in such a relationship, you fight a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. you're always complaining, you never appreciate me, you never affirm me, you never accept me. You always feel rejected, insulted, taken for granted. Mm -hmm. And when both of you are doing that, it's very painful. Mm -hmm. And that relationship is often characterized by a lot of pain and fighting. Okay, the other consumer relationship is when it's one sided. Mm -hmm. When one of you is giving, 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 and the other person is just receiving, you are giving acceptance, affirmation, appreciation. The other person is just there. And they're saying, yeah, yes, just keep it coming, keep it coming. But they never reciprocate. Mm -hmm. if that, that, that's a toxic relationship as mm -hmm. well. You know, we just feel drained. One person feels drained. One person feels like, wow, I'm the one who's always giving. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who's always doing this. Mm -hmm. Now, many people in that situation say, ah, I'll stop giving. Mm -hmm. I, I'm done. You know, it's time for me to be loved. All right. And of course, that's a reaction out of pain. You know, mm -hmm. You should never ever at any point ever declare that giving is the wrong thing to do. Giving mm -hmm. is always the right thing to do. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20, it is more blessed to give than to receive. receive. You know, mm -hmm. And uh, when you find yourself in a situation when you're always giving, you must ask yourself, what are the values of your friendship? Mm -hmm. What are your personal values? What is your partner's values? What are, they, what are their personal values? And do they match? Mm. Is this a supernatural friend? Is this a natural friend? Is this a romantic friend? Okay, especially the supernatural. And the supernatural friendship is where you really determine the values of someone. Mm. And if you're not equally yoked, if your values are not the same, you'll find yourself constantly fighting. Either you'll be the one who's always giving, or you'll find yourself constantly trying to take from one another. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, beyond those basic needs that every human being has, there are certain gender needs. All right. Mm. Generally, God has wired women in such a way that a woman's one of the one of the deepest needs for a woman is the need to be emotionally connected to her man mm, okay true. women desire emotional connection in relationships so okay and that's why in ephesians chapter 5 men are commanded love your wives mm, yeah. when you love your wives guess what you meet that emotional need mm. and guess what they feel satisfied mm -hmm. men have got a deep a deep need to be respected mm -hmm. okay god has put that in a man and that's why in ephesians chapter 5 uh, god tells the women the women submit to your husbands and respect them okay mm -hmm. because men love respect men desire respect when a man is respected he feels at peace mm -hmm. when a woman 
gets emotionally connected to her man, she feels at peace. Okay? When a man denies that emotional connection to her woman, he denies her peace. When a woman refuses to respect her man, she denies him peace. Okay? So and, in short, peace is not as no from what you're saying, yes. really before you go ahead. Yes, yes. It's not a state of calmness, it's mm -hmm. a state of being met a certain need. Yeah, I mean you you know you know some people confuse peace with the lack of war. You know, lack yeah, of yeah. war is not necessarily peace, you know. That's what I'm getting it, from it's you. a need, peace is a need that's met. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the need that is met primarily, number one, for mm -hmm. every human being, acceptance, affirmation, appreciation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Secondly, for a woman emotional connection mm -hmm. for a man respect mm -hmm. okay so even though you accept a farm and appreciate this woman but you don't spend time to emotionally connect with her mm -hmm. okay you will lose her out she will still feel like there's something missing in this relationship mm -hmm. and she'll say something like oh he's a good guy he's not a bad guy he's a... but <laughs> there's that <laughs> missing thing and at the time she's not self-aware to know that we don't have an emotional connection you know yeah. we don't talk and when we talk he doesn't open up he doesn't tell me his struggles. He doesn't tell me his weaknesses. He doesn't tell me what he's going through. He doesn't tell when, he, when he's talking about his day. He just says, yeah, I woke up, I boarded a matatu, went to town and I met my boss and I fulfilled the assignments and I came back home the end. And she's like, actually, that is even longer. Yeah, you know, that's <laughs> long. Eh? <laughs> you know? Came, you <laughs> exactly. She, she wants you to connect. She wants you to say, hey, you know, how was your day? You know, mm -hmm. did you go through anything? Did you? And that's why when a woman expresses herself, mm -hmm. she expresses herself emotionally. Mm -hmm. She says, oh my goodness, I have such a tough time with this matatu mm -hmm. driver. And then guess what? Imagine my colleagues at work are stressing me mm -hmm. out. You know what she's doing? Through conversation, she's trying to reach out. And this is a trick for men. When one of the ways to just connect with your wife or to connect with your woman emotionally is through conversation. Mm -hmm. Intentional conversation. Mm -hmm. Intentional personalized conversation mm -hmm. that will start to build it will mm -hmm. it will be st stage one mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. you'll keep discovering that there are more levels okay mm -hmm. it, it it will start to do that right mm -hmm. and now for the man um men want their women to be able to respect them all right and one of the ways a woman can do that is to just recognize the efforts of a man mm -hmm. okay many times uh women are, are w w women can be so committed to trying to help their men you know and in the process they criticize their efforts and they think by criticizing their efforts they are sparring them or perhaps you've got a man who perhaps is not driven in a certain area mm -hmm. and you want to encourage him you know and you know you may say something that you know you think this will spy him up this will you know like that's what no more can go see mama you know and you're thinking now he'll be challenged he'll be like ah no no he'll feel very disrespected yes. he'll be like why are you talking to me like that yeah. he won't stand up mm -hmm. he will remain there and that will be a fight mm -hmm. but if you pull out, I remember a woman who was, um, I remember even those, in fact, the, the best example is a clip that I saw going around mm -hmm. of this couple that uh, the man had, the, the, the man, I think the man's wife had died, okay? Mm -hmm. And so he had children from his first marriage. He got married to this woman, and so he had, so now he came with his children, and then now they had their own children, mm -hmm. okay? And the man's children for the first wife were not really respecting mm -hmm. this new wife, you know? Mm -hmm. And this new wife was feeling like, you know, your children are indisciplined. What? Mm -hmm. So now she came and she started telling him, you know what? Your children, whom I did not bear, are not behaving. Eh? They are yours. They are not mine. Eh? Did, I, did I give birth to them? And that man was just put off. And I remember uh, her mom came and said, listen, listen, okay? That's not how you communicate it. This is how you communicate it. I have a concern, mm -hmm. you know, that the children... Your children, you know, whom I know want to be, whom I know you want to be great and successful men and women, are not turning out to be the men that you want them to be. Mm. And I know that you want them to be better men. I want them to be exactly like you. How about you pay attention to this? I tell them to clean up, they don't clean up. These are not the kind of men that are going to grow up in this home. I want them to be exactly like you. I need you to help me out with that. That man rises up immediately and goes mm. to help. You mm. see, it's the same communication, but one has respect, one does not have yeah, respect, yeah. one does not have regard. Mm -hmm. So when you communicate with respect, you meet the need for a man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So relationships ought to be mutual, mm -hmm. where you, the man and the woman, both give, okay, yeah. and they meet those needs: acceptance, affirmation, respect, aff affirmation, aff acceptance, affirmation, appreciation, then respect for the man, and emotional for connection them. for the woman, love for the woman. Yeah, uh, that relationship will flourish. I yeah. totally agree. They are mm. very basic needs that mm. we all need, and that is why we really need people around us. And yeah. we have been made like that, yeah. to really be alone. Mm. And you just said something, and I've just remembered, of course, I'm a woman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, saying that you need conversation. Mm. Um, I'm, just, I'm just seeing the reality of things. If you don't talk intentionally to them, 
you will talk to them ultimately. Yeah. By force of circumstances. Mm. Because now when it bottles up and yes. then we say I'm saying, but now it's worse. Yeah, you'll not talk it. to them, you'll talk at them. So yeah. You talk at them. Yeah. So and of course when it comes to respect, I also feel like mostly it comes out from the words we Mm. you know and the actions mm. especially the words because yeah. even as believers i mean the bible is more speaking to marriage most of them have anything. to tell you a tongue if we can tame our tongues if you can teach our tongues to have loving conversations yes. that yeah our tongues can just really sort yeah. out yeah and of course trying to balance between speaking life because mm. at this point if i come complaining what am i doing In, ultimately i'm trying to spiritually mm. really block these people from being who they are supposed to be because mm. i'm really saying who they are not mm. while i should be saying who they are yeah and what is really can really prevent them from being who they need to be and you know just to add some 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 flesh onto that you know the the, the template i've given uh someone may say and that sounds ideal but you know we, it really doesn't happen like that in my relationship you know mm. i try to offer acceptance affirmation appreciation respect love but things are rocky that's because we live in a sinful world okay mm. and in a sinful world you are tempted to give but that consumer mindset constantly comes and close back at you okay mm. so let me say a few things one if you find yourself constantly giving in a relationship mm -hmm. and the other person is not committed at all to meet your needs okay mm -hmm. if you're not married let me tell you it's okay to leave Okay, mm. some breakups are breakthroughs. Yes. <laughs> okay, some breakups are breakthroughs. You know, yes. don't whatever, whatever, whatever teaspoons you get in dating, mm. you'll get bucketfuls in marriage. Yes, always extrapolate. True. Okay, True. whatever cupfuls you're getting in 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 dating, you will get boatloads mm. in marriage. All right. Yeah. Secondly, you must not easily give up on a relationship mm -hmm. simply because you face a tough time. Mm -hmm. Okay, you must understand that because we live in a sinful world, the natural desire is not to give, is to take. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when a man meets a woman, uh, and a woman, when, when a man and a woman meet, the natural desire is to meet my needs first. Okay, mm -hmm. and part of being a believer mm -hmm. is dying to self. Yes. Dying to self means that when I'm in a relationship with this woman, I actually ask myself. What do they need first? I have to intentionally ask myself. I should not think that I will naturally give. Mm -hmm. It won't come naturally. Mm -hmm. The sinful nature in me, the first thing it wants mm -hmm. is what do I want? Mm -hmm. And so I must consciously tell myself whenever I'm about to meet my girlfriend, whenever I'm about to meet my boyfriend, whenever I'm about to meet my spouse, what do they want? What can I do for them? And when you do that, you will spur them to also do the same. Sure, okay? Sure. The worst kind of relationship is where you're waiting to be served. Mm -hmm. We're saying, I will only serve until they serve me. Yeah. The best kind of relationship is that when you wait while serving, you're actually serving this person, and then they are serving you in return. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you get into a situation where you find yourself uh, constantly, you know, serving this person and they're not serving back, of course, that's horrible. Okay. But you'll be surprised many times when you offer yourself, you know, they will also offer themselves back. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It reminds me of the word again. When he says, give and it shall be given to you. Yes. Put down, shaken, a good measure. together, Poured good into measure. Your lap. All mm. of it. I feel like it's the same. It's not all about atikupeana kwa church. You know, mm. people think it's all about that. Mm. But I feel it will also uh, apply in relationships. Mm. Mm. Like the more you give, the more mm. you even get in return. As mm. long as it's a healthy relationship, mm. that should be the um, ultimate yes. result. Yes. People think that the more they get, the more they will keep on getting. But mm. it's the more you invest, mm. the more you reap what you sow. That's true. Wow, amazing. So maybe in a few seconds, you can just give your conclusive remarks on this. Because mm. um, we are short of time, but not short of knowledge. I mean, there's so much to really <laughs> yeah. say about this. Yes. And personally, I'm getting a lot from this. And I hope you are as well. Mm. This is all for you guys. So, yeah. yeah. So in summary, I'll say, die to self. Okay? Mm. Die to self. Let the nature in you uh, that that is constantly fighting to be fast, be last. Okay? And the way to do that is by considering what Christ did on the cross. Christ gave himself. You can love without giving, but you can you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Yes. And so you have to die to self in order to love as Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. There's nothing more to add. I mean, guys, just go back and really think about what we've talked about today because this thing that he said which is true we are our natural inclination is towards always evil it takes intentionality to actually mm. be able to incline towards the will of mm. god and that is why we need jesus in our lives and that is why in the end relationships need god because it's a whole lot of you know work that you mm. need to put in for it to work in the end but again 
it's mm. it's it's easier it's like taking an elevator to an 18th floor mm. when you have jesus than walking on the staircase mm. up to the 18th floor wow. so i mm. hope you had a great time we did too and thank you very much thank you for that amazing sharing mm. and join us next time of course this is wema tv decoding the process and i am your host martha mora i hope you have an amazing evening thank you mm.